So for those so for those who's new year today on this recording, uh, we've been on quite a journey on what we call module three, which is how to put products and services together that really attracts people, but also allow you to put your prices up and um, really play the premium market. If that's something that you're interested in, this does not only apply for premium products, does not only apply for you know wanting to put your price up for premium pro products, it applies for any type of product of server, any type of offer really that you want to put together and want to put out there in the market. Now, traditionally, when we put products and services together, we looked at an idea and then we used to package that idea and then we used to pitch that idea to the market. And I think for those of you who sat through this whole module three with me, you've seen that there's quite an alternative way of doing it. And one of the big things I think that stood out so far and that's alternative and putting your product and services together is that you have to think of your value proposition before you think of the specific products and services you want to develop. I think that's one of the big things that stood out. I think the second thing that stood out is that if you want to put a product and service in the market that's going to be of high value, you have to put yourself in that product and service. You have to put your essence in. In other words, what differentiates you? What makes you unique? And more specifically, what's the things that you love? What's the things that you like? Because you want that to be visible in your packaging and your branding and all that. So that's definitely something that stood out as well. And I think the third thing that really stood out is that you want your product and service to be available in one very well-designed visual that you can show potential clients. You can show it to them in a webinar. You can show it to them in presentations. You can show the visual to them on the on your phone. You know, if people come to you and ask you, so what do you do, which is the question we always get, you can say, look, here's my visual. So I think for those of you who's new on module three, please go back all the way, um, you know, ask Chris on this call for the playlist and he'll send you the playlist where we actually went all the way through this module. There's 13 lessons in this module. It's quite a big one and it will serve you best if you start right at the beginning and work through all of them. Now, they all an hour long. So you're talking about 13 hours of content, but it's 13 hours of content that will absolutely change the way you put your products and services together and all also change the way you price, which is something that's very near and dear to my heart. You know, I want you all to be happy and I want you all to be prosperous, but I want you to make enough money in your life so that you can touch your life and the lives of the people around you. That's what's important. So today we're on the final lesson of module three and uh, we're going to get going here. So this is level three, launching your products and services. And this is the topic or the theme for today. So today we're going to find out why launching why a launching strategy for your products and services really make a massive difference i've seen so many people who put a product together a service a book or whatever and then they do not launch that so that thing sits like a white elephant after sometimes years and years of you know passion blood sweat laughter tears going into that and it's just not right so you, you you cannot possibly have stayed with me through all of these 12 lessons in module three and then come to the final one the final step step 12 lesson plan 13 and leave out the most important part so you have to launch this product and service that you've developed we're also going to look at how to launch your new product and services to big audiences using events stages and the media and then lastly we'll also give you a better understanding of the value of launching in partnership with influencers. I think one of the most powerful quotes that I you know, use on a weekly basis is you are not alone. You are not alone. So if you sit here today and you're a solopreneur, you maybe have a few VAs, or maybe you are a, a CEO of a company and you have 300 to 1,000 people working for you, it can be a very lonely journey. And uh, many entrepreneurs tend to want to do everything themselves, which is just not viable. Uh, on the long term, you're going to burn out and you won't be able to scale. So um, I want to talk about launching and how you can do it in partnership with other people as well. So let's get going. So this is the whole process that I've been taking you through. Uh, for those of you who are listening in and not seeing the video, I'm referring here to 
13 steps that we've been going through over the past few months um, that really touches on how to put a high-end offer design process together. And these steps included things like, uh, what do you do, number one? What do you want to do every single day of your life? Um, even if you're going to scale in future, that's a very good starting point. Who are you developing your products and services for? Um, what is their big fat problem? Uh, what's your essence and how is that going to present later in your message and your package? What's the solution that you're going to come up with uh, when it comes to your target market? What is the strategy for your products and services? In other words, which products and services are your baseline? Which products and services are your stretch? Which products and services are your grand slam? How are you going to put all of this into one image, which we call a blueprint design? What exactly is going to be your services that you're going to offer? What exactly is going to be your products? How are you going to package it? What it means to run a focus group where people give you some feedback on what you've developed. And now here today, we see the red mark here. How on earth are you going to launch this offer that you put together? And today, as you can see, we're here on the final, final step. And so hopefully after today, if you're making notes here, you'll be able to have a launching formula. In other words, the one, two or three things that you're really committed to doing in launching your product and service. I'm saying one, two or three things because what I want, don't want you to do is be so overwhelmed after the session that you go, there's now a thousand things for you to do. There's not a thousand things for you to do. I mean, uh, Mike just launched our brand new book yesterday at uh, the Circle of Excellence book. And uh, within, you know, within literally 24 hours, Hours, this book is now a uh, number one on Amazon as a new release. So you will be blown away at the few steps we had to take to get it to that point. So sometimes it's uh, being more intense in a short period of time, as opposed to having this weeks and weeks of buildup, but it gets sort of diluted and watered out. So I think that for me is going to be one of the biggest messages when it comes to launching a product or, product or service. So let's move, move on to topic one, which is about the benefits of launching. Now, I have a rock star here uh, for a very good reason, because when it comes to, uh, you know, launching your product or service, I want you to think the way rock stars thinks, because uh, they have done launching so incredibly well. And so what a rock star does when they're about to um, go on stage or entertain a crowd, and that's really what launching a product or service is, is to entertain your crowd, is to keep them excited and have them in big anticipation and standing in that audience and literally, you know, watching that stage and they're not taking their eyes off the stage and they only want to see one thing. They want to see that rock star appearing. And what usually happens, the rock star has a build up. So there's maybe a pre-band before the rock star uh, comes up on stage. There's some lights, uh, you know, people, there's some tents up where people go and get their drinks, there is people dressed up and all that, uh, all that happens before the rock star appear. Now, if you think of this build up, uh, you know, before the rock star appear, you, you almost want to take it a few steps back. It's not like, it's not like, boof, yeah, you're standing in the stadium and in two seconds, the rock star appear and the show starts. It's just not how it works, but it's the way we handle things when it comes to our products and services. We've spent so much time develop some, developing something. Then we go into Facebook and then we post. And the post says, hi, everyone, here's my new product and service. And then what happens is nothing. And I've seen people so incredibly disappointed with this because they go, I've done so much and there's no reaction. But if a rock star was going to act like that, it would have the same watered down effect. So let's think of the rock star. Let's use this as a very valuable analogy of how you can launch your products and services. So you don't boof appear in the stadium. You go a week or two before the time and you start telling people, look, I'm going to go to this concert. I'm seeing Lenny Kravitz. I haven't seen him for a while. Can't wait to see him. And your friends is, oh yeah, that's cool. Uh, is he coming to your country? Yes, he is. Uh, what time is it? What stadium is he going to sing in? Uh, and here's a very important thing. What are you going to wear? 
uh, to this launch. And so you, you can see the conversation. So when you launch your product or service, you want to find a way to start enticing that conversation and have that build up and excitement, let's say at least two weeks before the actual launch of the product. And um, sometimes we find even closer to the launch. So, you know, you're not necessarily going to talk to your friends about you seeing someone six months uh, before the time. And even if you may, they're going to forget. So one week, two weeks before the time, you really start with the build up and you start with the anticipation. Then it is the 24 days before uh, where you start really looking at your clothes, you're really getting excited, butterflies is starting. On the day you get into the car, you're actually at the stadium, you show your ticket and you see all these lights and entertainment and um, you, you have other people, like-minded people there that's going to enjoy it. And then you have the pre-band to build it up even more. And then there's lots of light and Bob's your uncle, the rock star, appears on stage so that's really the type of formula you want to use for a build up as well and what's very important is once that rock star come and present their first song or two people go crazy people go crazy about what's happening there but then something very interesting happened that rock star after doing one or two or three or a couple of songs realized that they have freaked people out so much now with their positioning and with their lights and with their I have arrived that they have now placed themselves on a massive pedestal. They have put themselves now up there on stage. Everyone is looking up to them. It's almost like a godly experience. And when you do that, you've now lost connection with people. So a successful launch needs a massive entry and lots of good positioning that make people look up to you. But very soon after the launch, you have to come down to earth. You have to start now making a connection with the people in the audience who's going, oh. And so what does the rock star do? They jump from the stage into the crowd of people and people start to carry them on their hands. And that's why they do that. They basically, by doing, saying to people, look, I'm not your God. I'm not your guru. I'm a human being like you. So I'm going to emerge myself now in your five senses so that you can see I'm just like you. So when it comes to a launch, soon after the big rah-rah and we have arrived and this is new, you have to find a way to make that connection. How can you do it? Uh, when you launch a product, well, you can comment, uh, you can give, um, you know, you can share, uh, you can check in with people uh, on your, your smartphone and go, hi, um, I, I just noticed you've bought the book. I just wanted to really, really thank you. You're going to enjoy it. There's a chapter specifically in that book uh, that relates to me or this other person that's really, really cool that I would highly recommend you read. So you see now how you've made this special appearance and it stars and sparkles and this is all new and exciting. But very soon after that, you want to find that human connection. So it doesn't matter what you get out of this recording today. This is the principle I want you to remember is that big entrance, uh, very, very uh, intense short buildup. And then very soon after that, coming down to earth and connecting with as many people one to one as you can. That means going for a coffee with some of the people. That means uh, commenting uh, on their success. That means picking up your phone and sending them a voice note. That means sending them a text. That means calling them. It depends on really what works for you. So that is the number one principle here when it comes to launching a product and service. Now, a very successful way that we've done it in the past and still is by making use of big audiences, events, and stages. So here, I'm not really necessarily talking about going online. I'm talking about really closing your laptop and going on big stages. Uh, if you're a speaker, it is easy, right? If you're a speaker, you just go and you get speaking gigs and you promote your product and service from stage. It's very powerful. It is very similar to the rock star analogy that I've mentioned. So that can be very, very valuable. Um, you can also put your own events together um, or you can go to other people's events. You can go to networking events um, and all that will be very, very valuable. So big audiences, where do you find big audiences? You can find that at conferences. You can find that in corporate gigs, events. You can go to other people's events. 
stages. You can get on other people's stages. You can get onto your own stages. But the principle here is to get a group of people that's in your target audience in front of you. So many people today who has publishing deals has made use of this strategy. They actually brought out a new book or product or service, and they actually went to a big summit or a big conference, uh, or a big industry event, and they got a slot there on that stage. And then what they do, they deliver real good content that relates to the product and service, and then they sell it off stage. Now, previous years, this was very, very successful. Uh, what they would do, a person would speak on stage, and then sell the product there and then and get people to really run back to the room and sign up. It doesn't quite work like that these days. Uh, these days, you would be on the stage. You would, for example, talk about your book or you'll talk about your content and product and service, but you won't necessarily immediate sell, immediately sell it. But you'll find a way for people from that stage to come into your funnel. So, for example, you may be on stage and talking about stress and how stress is affecting your energy and how you have contributed to a book where you talk about stress or you've written your own book about it. And then you might talk about the top tools and tips on how to deal with stress. And then you'll say to people, well, if you're not sure today if your stress is red flag at the moment, I would highly recommend that you go onto this web link. And on this web link, you go and look for my assessment. And this assessment will show you how incredibly stressed you are or not. So you see, it's not a hard sale. It's a very, very soft sale. You're getting people into your universe. You're attracting people into your universe of stress. But if you do that on one-on-one -on -one calls, it's going to take you quite some time to get people to come onto your assessment. Whereas if you have something new and you're launching, having a stage where you have 2,000 or 3,000 people in front of you, even just 30 people in front of you, even just 10 people in front of you, help you to get quite a lot of people with the launch of your new assessment or your new product to come into that funnel and to come on a journey with you. So that's how things are really, really moving. Um, lots of people still stand on style, uh, on stage and do hard sales. Uh, it does work. It's not that it's over, but your conversion rate will probably be much lower um, if you just take a little bit more time uh, you get people to fill an assessment or to get a free gift or whatever and then from there on take them on a journey where you build trust with them and you build relationship with them so but stages and events is still incredibly relevant there's lots of people in the speaking industry especially who think that stage time and conferences and business events and breakfasts and those things are over it's absolutely not it's really coming back big time and why is that the case well if if you look at um times of war let's say we look at things like world war one and world war two and some of these big 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 events in history so many products and services and offers and business dealings that didn't make it um the one thing that keeps on making it throughout history is the arts and theater so even though all business events and conferences and stages is not exactly arts and theater. It's very close to it in the sense that it has massive entertainment value. So there's a reason why Netflix is doing so well. And there's a reason why all these online TV channels are doing so well, because people are looking to be entertained. And if you launch from stage, from stage, you want to entertain. You want to entertain that audience. You want to excite that audience. And then in the process, launch your products and services in a very, very soft way. So this is offline, right? This is doing it with your laptop closed. But then, of course, you can do it online as well. There's many ways for you actually to um, get involved uh, if you want to launch a product and service online and many times it's just not possible to do it on a stage you know many of you on this call may not be speakers um you know i had a really really interesting call with our young entrepreneur x factor winners this week when i was introducing them to octopus which is one of the 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 prizes they've won by pitching their products and services which is just so cute and um you know Two kids were sitting on the call, one's 13 and one I think is around six years old, um, Joe and Karen. And Joe is so fired up for a speaking career. Let me tell you, he just want to be on stages. He just had his first stage appearance. He did so well. Um, but then his sister is sitting there and going, do I really have to be a speaker? 
And I'm like, no, Karen, you don't have to be a speaker. You can do it differently, you know. I said to her, look, you can be a boss. You can get speakers to work for you. So um, when I talk about stages and online summits, I don't always mean you have to make the appearance personally. You can always get people to do it on your behalf. And if you don't feel comfortable launching from a stage, you can always do it via online summits. There's four ways here that I'm going to share with you how you can do it. There's numerous ways, but these four you can just take with you for today. So uh, number one, you can go and do podcast interviews. So you go and find podcasts in your field of expertise and you do a guest appearance on there and someone interview you about your content or the value you're providing. Um, and then you mention sort of in the middle of that, that you have a product or service that you want to share, but again, soft launch, right? You send people to your website or a free link or something that may them stick to you and from there on you take them on a journey you can go to many influencer channels you can go to an influencer in your area you can do a live facebook stream with them or a live tiktok stream with them or a live uh, whatever stream with them uh, whatever that your channel of choice is uh, you can do industry webinars as some of you who've joined us for the book launch yesterday saw sort of a little bit of what an industry webinar can look like. Uh, it's basically a presentation and you talk and you invite people to attend it. It's very much like an online event. And then, of course, you can host community events online. You can get a specific community and host something online. Um, Paul Taval, who's on this call, has done this very successfully with a group of people over the years. I'm not sure, Paul, if you still do it, where you have your chats and your wines and it serves a community and um, during that you know it becomes very informal you form very deep friendships but it's also great platforms to launch some of your new ideas or new products or services it's, it's very valuable and to be honest it's really really fun so there's a lot of ways for you actually to do it online and I think honestly these days a combination of the two things is probably the best um, with this picture I just want to say whether you do it offline or online um, is really, really good to keep consistency, you know. So um, if you are constantly launching things, some of you, um, you know, have a product and service and you 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 selling that product and services. But others on you on this call are the type of person who constantly have to create. I call you mother hens because you always have to lay eggs right you can never you can never sit with just one product or service and um, me and mike are very like that as well there's always something new there's always eggs you know now it's this egg now it's that egg, egg now it's this product now it's this service now it's this webinar now it's this now if that's how you are you're always going to launch and uh, then what you want to do whether you're doing it offline on stages or online, you want to have consistency. So on this picture, you see the diary lying next to this person. If you can have a launch plan for all your products and services a year in advance, then you are onto it. Then you are onto it. So what we do many times, we sit October every year. Um, me and Mike, in fact, have got a planning session weekend actually planned for this weekend. Then we go and we book ourselves away. We go to a different location and we plan you know, what's our next products, what's what's our next services, how are we going to launch them? And then we sort of have a calendar uh, for the year ahead where this launch plan is already pinned in. So we know we're launching this there and we're traveling there to launch this and we're going to be on those stages to launch this and we're going to have these webinars to launch this. Now, it sort of um, has the... When you like this, when you're a hen and you lay a lot of eggs, it can really divert you sometimes. You can you can get warded off because you're so busy with so many things. But if you if you're a person who's sitting on this call, well, I guess, you know, we need to be politically correct. In future, we may have even got aliens sitting on this call from other planets. You don't know. So many things has happened over the past five years. I wouldn't be surprised if a few greys join us in future. But um, you know, if you're humans sitting on this call and you only have one product, or one service, or one offer, you have a massive advantage that you can create this real consistency um, with that. You know, you can have a plan ahead and talk about the same thing in different ponds over and over again and create a huge swell. So a lot of people think they have to reinvent things all the time to 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 stay relevant and to excite people all the time but if you have one product or service all you do is you change your pond you go and launch over and over again in the same pond if you're a person that uh 
that have new eggs all the time, your strategy will be you can stay in the same pond, but you have to keep this pond super excited all the time. So, so that's the difference. Both works. It depends on how much energy you have um, and, and where you want to play. Now, let's look at launching uh, from an influencer point of view. As I said, you do not have to do this alone. Uh, many people develop products and services. I would say the majority of people develop products and services, and this is what they do. They don't talk about it at all. They've developed it in the dark corner of their room, and they don't talk about it at all. They just hope for a miracle. Uh, they go to a few networking events, and maybe one or two people will get excited about it. Ain't going to happen, right? It's not going to happen. So, But a lot of people do that. Um, and there's lots of reasons for it. It's not because there's anything wrong with you. It's because people are shy. Uh, people are not quite sure they've developed something that's correct. Uh, people are waiting for other factors before it's perfect. And that's a big, big, big mistake. I mean, the Octopus online program that a lot of you are part of, um, I had the Octopus online program developed on my phone with a few notes and pictures. That's all I had. And then Mike was already selling that to the first licensee. So if I waited for it to be perfect, it never would have seen the day of light. And so when Mike sold it to the first licensee, I was like, oh crap, right? Now it's sold to the first licensee. Now I have to go and finish and complete this thing. So never wait for your product to be ready before you launch it, right? You 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 want to have a prototype and you want to have an idea that's you know initially packaged in a blueprint, but you don't want to wait for it before you go out there. Other people just... Um, don't launch it because they're shy. They they have, uh, uh, you know, the whole imposter syndrome thing, which I don't believe is real. Um, and then then other people just don't launch because they've never been taught how to launch, you know. So there's nothing wrong with you if you don't launch. But uh, today is to give you the intelligence to consider really launching what you're doing. So other people just go and post on Facebook. Go, hi, here's my new software. Here's a link. Then nothing happens. They get one like. Maybe their mom share it with someone because they feel sorry for their child, you know, that type of thing. Um, other people maybe go and have a business breakfast and it happens once and then it's over and nothing happens after that. So that's not going to work. Uh, you want to create consistency. Uh, you want to create excitement. Uh, you want to change your groups. You want to get in front of different types of audiences and a very quick way to do that and to create that swell is to go and find macro and micro influencers who's going to help you get the word out. So uh, some of you may have seen this before, but here is an infographic that shows you the type of influencers out there just to help you apply your mind. So for those of you who are listening in, you get, of course, big influencers, big, big, big. These are the people with 1 million plus followings. And when I say 1 million, I'm actually being super conservative here. I mean, these days on YouTube, you can go and look for them. Millions and millions and millions of followers, you know, if you can reach one of these people and you can make a deal with them with the launch of your product, service or offer, you really got it going. It's it's a powerful strategy. It can be an expensive strategy. Um, you know, you might want to buy a celebrity time so that they can talk about your product or service, but it's one of the most impactful and powerful strategies the thing is if you're going to go this route you have to do your numbers you have to go and work out the cost of getting celebrity versus the clout you're getting and return on investment and profit whereas sometimes with celebrities it's really not that easy predictable so your risk here is high it's high risk but super impactful where i find a celebrity influencer to be very valuable in the launch of your product or service is where you have a relationship with them it's a friend of yours or it's someone you know and you do a deal where you really help each other so for example you get a lot of sports celebrities out there who's had a fantastic career and had a lot of attention and received a lot of money and then they retire quite young and there they sit uh, they're not getting promoted and, and they're not making money and that type of thing. So if you, for example, got a product in digital marketing or you have a product um, uh, where you publish books, whatever, you can make a deal with that person. So look, I'm going to bring your book out for you, but you can have to, uh, you know, promote something for me uh, as my influence. So once I do that or um, I'm bringing a book out, you need to write the front word. Uh, the forward, I'll go and get the corporate company who's going to buy a bunch of books, whatever the deal looks like. That's a whole different conversation. But um, I find a deal almost like a swap 
deal between you and a celebrity are usually some of the most powerful ones when you have to start paying them. It's quite expensive. It's high risk because you don't know if you're going to get return on investment. Then uh, next level down, let's say you go, Lundy, not my circus, not my monkey. I don't want to work with celebrities. They're prima donnas. Don't want anything to do with them. You go level down in terms of influences and you can go to social stars. Super hot these days. Super hot. I tell you, social stars is at the moment the thing. So if you can have a strategy where you build relationship with social stars, you are onto it. So what you see a lot of people are doing at the moment to build relationship with social stars is they start an interviewing type of podcast. So they interview people. So they go and find uh, stars and they interview them and that's how they build friendships with these stars and also leverage them off their brand i mean one of the the, the very brilliant ones at the moment is a, a diary of a ceo i'm not sure if any of you follow this person but i mean just recently he now got an interview with prince william you know i mean that's how high he goes now the strategy here if you want to launch with the use of social stars is to have a podcast where you interview them or you have a magazine where you have them on the front cover uh, or you hang out in the right places where you hang out with the stars or you have a friend of a friend who introduce you and um uh, that's an in now when I talk about social stars, I'm not just talking about people necessarily on YouTube and that social stars also go for corporate stars, you know, people whose CEOs who mingle with CEOs who mingle with CEOs. So it, it depends on where you hang out. So let's say, for example, you work with corporates, then rather going for social stars, you can start looking into corporate stars and hang out at the clubs they're hanging out and go to the yacht clubs where they with their boats and go and play golf with them and whatever. Sometimes people look at this strategy and go, but I don't have those talents. You know, I don't have a boat. I can't play golf. I don't have any of those things that we find with these corporate stars. You don't need that. You just need to find out which clubs they are hanging out at and go and have drinks with them or chats with them or get to know them better. It is an incredible, powerful strategy. I'm basically saying to you, start making friends with the right people, right? Uh, that's that's how you leverage that. And then uh, those type of influences will influence the audiences that you want to reach. Um, then you get your bloggers still massively big and underestimated. Um, just something like in the food industry, you know, insane. If you go at the... The way, the way bloggers are actually specializing now is insane, you know. You get your carnivore, bro let's say food industry, carnivore bloggers. Then you have your vegan bloggers. Then you have, we're not vegan, we're plant-based bloggers. Then you have, we're not plant-based, we raw food bloggers. Then you, like, we're not raw food bloggers, we um actually vegetarians that eat fish bloggers. Then we are people with a specific disease with a specific way of eating bloggers so bloggers are insanely specialized so the recipes that pops out of that is just insane so why am I using that because there are bloggers in your industry that's as specific as you are so let's say for example you're a speaker that work with corporates that is into exercise after hours, or you're a speaker that work with corporates that love wine. Super specific. There's bloggers who are speakers who work with corporates who love wine. That's your audience. That's your influences. You have to go look for them. So let's say, for example, you have a condition. Let's say, for example, the condition you have is that you suffer from a liver condition. These bloggers who suffer from a liver condition, who travel and work with corporates. That is how specific these formulas are. And if you can find them, you've hit the jackpot because then you start hanging out with that audience. You start making friends with that audience. You start launching your products and services of that audience. You will even get this with different religions. Um, you know, we're in a time now where we are taught that you have to um, have every single sex, race, religion, gender, being in your audience to be fully representative but that's just not how niching work and it doesn't have to be that way you can choose your crowd and the more closer your crowd is to you your products and services and what you've developed what you're going to do psychologically the more you're going to match and mirror to them that because you are like them you understand them better
you because you're going to help those people trust you as an expert in your field easier. You know, I can go and stand there in bunch of, I can stand there in front of a bunch of 30 year old women who's just had their first baby and promote my product and service to them. And my product and service is how to nurture a baby. And they're going to go, Lundy, really? Have you ever had a baby? No. Are you in your 30s? No. Um, you've just massively discredited yourself. Get out of here. And that whole crowd is going to go to a 30-year-old woman who's just had a baby and got a weight back, isn't healthy. And you see what I mean? So there's a crowd for you. There's a crowd who trusts you. There's a crowd who believe in your credibility. There's a crowd who matches and mirrors you psycho psychologically. That's what you want to look for. And bloggers is a very easy way to do it. Then, of course, mentors. You can look at um, experts, coaches, authors, speakers. You know, you fall part, you find a mentor, not just to mentor you. You find a mentor because they influence a community. So many of you in this community has walked into the circle of excellence environment or you've walked into the octopus tribe environment or however you ended up here because you wanted some counsel. But that's only a small reason why you're part of this community. You're part of this community because of the people in this community, because of the people who sit around the world in this community because of the friendship in this community and there's so many on you on this call even today who has not dipped even your pinky finger into the community we have and I want to use this opportunity to really encourage you to do that go onto the circle of excellence private Facebook group go onto the octopus group go and look at the members go and start messaging these members Start getting these people on Zoom calls. If you fly somewhere to a country in the world, check in with me and Mike. Ask us, who do you know in that part of the world that I can go and have a coffee or a drink with? Work your community. It's not just to launch your products and services on. It's to form friendships around the world. It's to make sure that you are hanging out with influencers because if you form friendships with these experts and coaches and authors and speakers, which are mostly the type of titles that sit in our community, you are building a family. And therefore, you don't have to launch your things alone anymore. You have people there who got your back is it going to happen overnight? No. If you're going to go to your circle, uh, circle of excellence community or you go to your octopus tribe community and you say to them, oh, you know what? Uh, my name is Philippe and I want to launch my book. People's going to go, look, I don't know you. Go away, right? But if you go, my name is Philippe and I'm part of the circle of excellence community. Um, hey, I sit on these global intelligence updates every Tuesday. I see you not there. I really want to, want to invite you to come and check it out with me. Um, and the person go, that's sweet. And then they do it next time. And then now Philippe goes, okay, we've done that. Now you check in with them. How was your global intelligence update? Oh, no, yeah, it was really, really great. Uh, you know what? I'll see you do that and this. I, I'm just going to share it today on my page or on my LinkedIn for you because it's very inspiring for me what you do. Oh, Philippe, that's so nice. Hey, it's me, Philippe. I'm coming to Vegas uh, next month. Uh, I see Mike and Landy told me you actually live in Vegas. Hey, why don't we go for a coffee together? Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, let's meet each other. That's how you build relationships. Uh, oh, I saw on Facebook your dog passed away. I'm so sorry that your dog passed away. Um, hey, we've been on chatting on Facebook Messenger for a time now. Um, I can honestly say we're friends now. Can I have your WhatsApp number so I can just check in with you from time to time? Hey, that's so cool. Uh, sure, here's my number. Next week. Hi, I saw on Facebook that you're traveling in that area. I've been in that area with my wife last week um, and we really got to see this place and it was fantastic. Oh, wow. Philippe, you're such a nice person. Oh gosh, what's going to happen in a month or two or three, you're going to start launching products and services and you are building champions. You're building champions, you're building friendships, you're building community. And so that is how influencers work. And so then every time you launch something new, people are excited about you, what you're doing, um, but they're not only excited about what you're doing, they care about you and they want to see you successful. And then you get the most powerful influencers in universe, Mike and Lundy, and that is your micro influencers. That is the people you keep really close to your heart, close in your community, your brothers and sisters. It's people we've known over the years. You started off as clients, uh, but you ended up 
as brothers or sisters. I mean, one person, I mean, I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the Philippe wagon, so I might as well just continue. Uh, Philippe has come into our, our universe as a client. It's very difficult for me to call Philippe a client these days. He's a friend. Uh, he's a family member. I can't imagine anything happening to me or Mike and not being able to to pick up the phone and say, look, this is what's happening in our life. Um, and he's saying, look, anything I can help you with, uh, let me know because we love each other. That's how micro influence uh, work. It's relationships. It's very strong long-term relationships that uh, both parties has invested in because they care about each other. When you get to that point, you only need 100 of those. If you have 100 close relationships like that, you'll never be alone. You'll, you'll have a soul family that's around you for the rest of your life where you're going to mutually support each other. Now you're hitting the big time. And you're not only hitting the big time in terms of launching product and services, just a quick sip of water. Just a quick sip of tea. You're not only hitting the big time in terms of products and services, you're hitting the big time in terms of life. You're hitting the big time in terms of life. You know, I want to go so fast to say, be practical about it. Go and put your Excel sheet together today or your CRM software, whatever it is that floats your boat. Uh, most of my information now sits on an app on my phone that's called... Um, What's this thing called? Uh, it's it's a it's a, a day one. Everything I do is now on day one. So when I decide who's going to be the contributors for Lead Magazine, I make my day one my list on there. When we are putting together plans for the uh, Global Speakers Summit that's happening in Bali next year, I sit on my phone. I do it on day one. When I see a animal spirit cross my path and I'm looking at the symbology of that I do it in day one uh, I do everything in day one so you can go on your excel sheet or software or in your day one if that's your thing and you can go there make your list make your list of the 100 micro influences in your life if you have three people that tells you something it doesn't tell you you're a bad person it doesn't tell you you're not competent it told you you sort of missed this piece of gold nugget but you can start building it today. You can, within the year, have 100 of the most incredible micro-influences around you that love you, care for you, champion you, and help you launch your products and services. Um, and, and this, if you can go and do this, you will never feel alone as an entrepreneur again because you have this family around you. Because let's face it, people fall away. Pets fall away. Friends fall away. Partners fall away. And at the end of the day, what do you have left? You may be left with your 100 influences that ultimately become your friends. Uh, you know, Mike tells in one of his books the story that when he hit his 40th birthday, he went to his Facebook page and not one person was wishing him happy birthday. Not one person. And he went like, where the hell did I went wrong? What did I do? How did I live that I became so involved in my busyness or life or problems or whatever what was going on for him that not one person feels they should wish him a happy birthday and that was a massive critical moment in Mike's life I hope he doesn't mind me telling the story I've not received a rock against my head from where he said <laughs> so I think it's okay but uh, he turned his life around then I think all of you can agree on this call today that Mike's got so many phenomenal people in his life I literally can't keep up I mean the first few years of our relationship I said to Mike if you introduce me to one more person I'm gonna get that tape you know that tape they put around a person who's just been murdered I said to him, I'm going to get that tape and I want you to put that tape around me because I don't want anyone to come close to me because of this massive amount of people that he introduced me to. And you know what? It really took me COVID just to relax a little bit and sort of get my energy back and ground again. And you know what? Me and Mike are heading in November for Australia and Mike has warned me. He said, my darling, 
you're going to hit your next thousand because he's already got a lot of new people he wanted to introduce me to, but I'm ready. I got my energy ready for that. And now, now that I grow older and wiser, I see what an incredible, incredible privilege it is to get to know all these people all over the world. But the beauty of it is the more you get to know all these people all over the world, the more you have the power in your hand to connect people with each other. And that's even more rewarding. I mean, just recently, you know, I connected you with a couple of people and it doesn't mean you're going to get along with them or you're going to like each other. But what if you do? What if this is just the start of an incredible friendship or partnership or a champion or whatever? And so that is really where the the, the true enrichment come in. So number one, you connect with people all over the world and build influences around you in order to launch your products and services. That is why you do it at face value. That is what this call is about today. Great, I get it. Number two, you do it so you don't have to be alone. You build a soul family that's going to champion you for the rest of your life. Number three, you feel the incredible joy of what it feels like to connect people with each other. So... For launching your products and services, that's something that you want to build. I just quickly want to touch on online versus offline promotions. Look, the question is always there. Lundy, when I launch, should I do it online or should I do it offline? Look, a combination of the two is always incredibly powerful. You want to do stuff online. You want to do stuff offline. But the more you do something offline, the more touch points you need. So, you know, if I have this book and I mean the Circle of Excellence book could just launch as a very, very good example, you know, because we're doing it online, we have to post so much more. We have to comment so much more. We have to share so much more. Your touch points is so much more. I mean, Philippe now has to go to all the contributors and he wants to make sure no one feels neglected and he wants to like everyone and tell everyone how great they are. So his touch points is more, whereas if Philippe had an event um, and the event allowed him to talk about the book from stage and all the contributors was there and 10,000 potential buyers of the book sat in the audience, he would have had one touch point. Uh, and that's the difference. So that's why I always promote offline launching over off, uh, uh, um, online. So for those of you who's sitting on this call, who's contributed to the book, and, and I'm just quickly, forgive me if I'm leaving someone out, but I'm seeing Paul now here, and I'm seeing Philippe now here. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who've contributed, please don't let this online circus that's going on now at the moment stop you. I would literally go now and have an offline event scheduled so i would do a launch party get some copies printed copies if you don't have your printed copies yet i uh, have them online uh, available and have a launch party with coffees or cocktails whatever and talk about this book and invite some people so so leverage it right don't just use the online thing so you can now go and do your own webinar online where you talk about the book you can do your own facebook live today today and tomorrow especially is critical because people are sitting and watching and waiting still so have your own facebook live about the book uh, if you don't like facebook live pre-record your own two-minute video and go and post it online. Talk about it, tag people in. And then you use this as an excuse to have your own offline party and invite people to the party and have a few coffees and wines, whatever, and talk about this and get some excitement built. And if you're on stage, talk about it or go and get some podcasts of people in your industry and talk about it. But uh, your touch points offline is more powerful than what it's online, but both of them will serve you very well. Last but not least, it's very valuable to leverage media. People forget about media. And so what I have here for you is a little bit of a pyramid here on the ways in which you can actually leverage media. So whether you're launching a product or service or new book, uh, there's a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of great things you can do to get media attention. Again, the number one thing you can do is to go and form relationships with people who's in media or in public relationship. If, you are, if you're going to have 100 people on your Excel sheet of influencers who are journalists, you'll never look back. Uh, and you're going to be a very popular person and you may even become a very famous person. But the pyramid works like this. You know, uh, the, 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 the more you lean towards media, even if it costs you money, the more you save a lot of time. Just because you have so much clout 
you reach so many people in such a short period of time. So whether you're making use of uh, magazine appearances or TV appearances or uh, a press release, or whether you're making use of a guest appearance on a star's YouTube channel, or whether you have an interview on a breakfast show or on a radio show, you really save a lot of time when you go for media. It might cost you money initially, um, but again, if you if you want to leverage it, I would just go and start building relationships in that area. Um, you know, you do get a lot of contacts uh, via media. Uh, you also want to build your own contacts. You want to have people on your Excel sheet. You want to have people at your parties. You want to want to have people in your sphere of influence who actually uh, plays a role in the media. So when you put your Excel sheet together today of influences, do make an area for media. In fact. You can have your Excel sheets and have different columns, a column for media influences, a column for um, people that influences in your industry, a column for people whose influences on social media, on the platforms you are on, uh, a co and so forth and so forth. It can be very valuable. And I'm saying 100, look, if you're a bull, uh, do a thousand, right? There's nothing stopping you, but uh, it's all gonna depend on how much you can nurture a relationship. You know, it's for me easier to nurture 100 seeds than it is to nurture a thousand seeds. So starting small is always a good way. And then of course you want to build a media kit, be ready and prepared. If you're going to be famous and if everyone's going to know about you, you want to have that media kit ready. You don't have to complicate the media kit. Uh, you can have in your media kit, something like a, a, a two minute video or show reel showing what you do or showing how your product work. Maybe it's an explainer video on how your product work. Maybe it's an explainer video on your book and how your book work and what your book covers. Um, but you want a video in there. You want also a one pager that explains it in text very well in there. So whether it's a one pager explaining your book or a one pager explaining your product or a one pager explaining your topic, your keynote speech. Um, and all those one pages can ultimately become a brochure. That's very valuable for a media kit. And then, of course, you want to have in there uh, high resolution photos from your latest photo shoot. I always encourage people to go for a photo shoot. Uh, you know, if you if you feeling good at the moment and you have your glowing skin and all that going on, it's probably a good time for your photo shoot. I want to encourage all of you to go for a new photo shoot again and have that in your media kit. It's really yes, Paul. Yes. It's sending the message that uh, you are on top of things and that you're relevant and that um, you're up to date. And also it's very useful for your social media to have the same photo across the board on all your platforms and to show consistency for people. So go and get your photos taken. You can put that in your media kit. If you do only those three things, it's a very good start. For those of you who have books, your book is also going to go into your media kit, the digital version of your book. Uh, you want to have a hard copy book that you can post to people in your media kit as well. And uh, if you have a blueprint that you talk to, you want that in your media kit. And then any reviews that is relevant to what you're launching or relevant to your products or services are very rare. Look, I can help you build a media kit that looks like a monster. But I always say to people, put three or four things in there. It's a good start. And then whatever you have there that you're going to hand to media has to be compelling. It has to be interesting. That is to be entertaining. It has to stand out. You know, it has to have story value. It has to talk about your essence. It has to talk about you as a person. You can't just go, oh, press release. Uh, Mark Shearer is launching the newest, greatest, lightest green juice that the planet has ever seen. No, you have to talk about Mark. And you have to talk about Mark and Mary's relationship. And you have to talk about their journey and what they've been through and how they got there. And it has to be entertaining so that other people can, can relate to that. So that is module three. Can you believe it? We have finally come to the end. If you feel that there's been massive periods between all of the lesson plans, long periods, I really want to encourage you, even if you've with, been with me on module three all this time, to get the playlist from, from Chris and listen through all of them again in a 13-hour sequence. It's going to have much more impact if you do it like that. Get yourself a book, call your book module three, and literally start listening through them. If you do Monday hour, Tuesday hour, Wednesday hour, Thursday hour, and you finish it in 13 days, you're going to get 10 times more value than if you've just sat with me on this call. And if you actually came into module three, yeah, at the end, I recommend that you do that even more. So as I always say, 
It's no use in having all of this information to your disposal if there's not one or two steps you can go and take immediately. So I always love to end this all with some recommended activities for you. So number one, get invited to a few launching parties and take note of what you like and dislike. I'm giving you a fun thing to do. You don't have to go and write things down or make a big plan immediately. Get into launch parties. Uh, go and Google what launch parties is happening for any product and service. If it's launch parties in your industry, even better, but it doesn't always work like that. And I love cross-contamination. I love it when, you know, a speaker attend the launch of a car, for example, because it opens your mind. It gives you new ideas or go and attend some book launches or uh, new wine labels or the launch of um, a new YouTube channel, whatever. Go and sit on those launches, look at what people are doing and get ideas for your products and services. And then, of course, here comes the left brain part then go and research and study launching formulas in your industry that has proven to be successful. Why reinvent the wheel? Go and look at how other people launch their books who's been very successful. Go and how other people launch their speaker careers that's been successful. How did other people launch their new brand? How did other people launch their new product? And so forth and so forth. How do you know when you're launching successfully? Well, a sudden intake of new customers from your target market on the day or immediately following the launch means you are really doing well. And then high level buzzing, inquiries, media attention, pre and post your launch usually mean that you really are getting it right. And so that is it from me on module three. Next, uh, I'll be start taking you through uh, not necessarily module four. Now, module four in the Octopus program is next up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about it now a little bit. And uh, Chris will go and announce to you next which module I'm tackling next. So I wanted to tackle module three because it has such value for putting prices up, for making money, for building prosperity, for digging into the way you want to express yourself to the world and therefore how your products and services express. But I'll be announcing to you very soon, Chris will probably poaching it, a, 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 not poach it, post it, uh, which one I'll be doing next. I can do sales and marketing. I can do sales. I can do marketing. I can do building team. I can do mindset. Um, I can do whatever. So if you have an idea of which one you would like to hear about more, if you want me to do the module on mindset or on sales or on marketing or on building team or the module on conscious leadership or whatever, or on strategy, send Chris a note so we can see what you want. And then I'll apply my mind. Now, unfortunately, I took all your time today. Uh, there's no time for questions. I actually want to uh, honor your time here. So I'm going to log off. And if there's any questions you're not sure of, just uh, send a note to, to Chris and uh, we'll try and get those answers to you. I hope you have a, all have a fantastic day, fantastic evening. For those of you who are on the book launch uh, walls with us, let's uh, hop forward with it further and do put a video or live on and it will really help. And uh, a, a very big, big congratulations on your success. Lots of love and enjoy your morning and evening. Cheers, everyone.